My belief on the matter is that it should not be used as a alternative to contraceptives. We shouldn't use it as a form of birth control. However, if the resulting birth would cause damage to the mother, to the child, or to or the woman had been assaulted beforehand, she should still have the option to get an abortion to remedy those situations. It just shouldn't be something we do all the time because you know, you didn't want to use another form of contraceptive. So how did you come to those views? Um, mainly through um, my religious beliefs as well as scientific ones and the influence of my parents, family, friends, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, due to when I believe um, life occurs scientifically and religiously. Um, so that's where they came from. Okay. I believe that no matter who you are, no matter what your situation is, you deserve to have the right to choose if you want an abortion or not. That means if that was, if your pregnancy was because of rape, whether it was just because of an accident, because contraceptives fail, no matter what the situation is, you deserve that right to control what happens to your body and you deserve to abort that pregnancy if you wish to. My family is very liberal to start. I grew up with my parents kind of telling me those beliefs, instilling that idea in me that it is a woman's right to choose. Um, and then also just through my own research, my own conversations with other people, my own life experiences, those have all sort of reinforced um, the ideals that my parents instilled in me. Okay, great. Um, personally, I believe that while Roe versus Wade does allow for abortions to be, uh, well, it, it requires them to be legal in all states, which I agree that there should be circumstances, as I said earlier, where they are legal, that the limitations and um, allowances that it makes towards both sides of the argument are ill-conceived, and that in overturning it, it should be replaced with a newer, uh, better written piece of legislation to better cover all circumstances and ensure fair rights to everyone across the board instead of how it is right now where depending on what state you live in you could be under different limits, uh, limits and restrictions. I think that it is very scary especially because the reasoning for why Roe versus Wade might be overturned applies to many other cases that were very groundbreaking and have made this country a much better place such as gay marriage and interracial marriages because nowhere in the Constitution does it explicitly say that abortion is a right, but nowhere in the Constitution does it say that many other things are explicitly a right. So not only is it scary that abortion could become illegal and banned in many states, but it also kind of sets the precedent for other cases who could very well may be overturned. So it's a very scary sort of development in the abortion issue. Um, so in talking with Mr. Cosner uh, in the debate class about this, actually, um, we were going over the criterion or the values of both sides in this scenario. Uh, the pro-choice movement, uh, they value privacy, personal autonomy, liberty, freedom, etc. And the pro-life side values life, liberty, etc. but for the um, unborn child. So I'd say that a common misconception is that people think that just because someone might be pro-life, they don't value a woman's right to privacy or her own personal freedoms and rights. Um, I think many people kind of can perceive pro-choice as being pro-abortion or that I would have an abortion myself. Um, you do not have to like abortion, you do not have to full-heartedly support abortion to be pro-choice, you simply just have to support the idea that a woman can choose whether she has one or not. So that means you personally could not want to have an abortion at all 
you could think that it's murder religiously, personally, but you don't have to be pro-life if you think that. You can still respect that another woman might think differently about the situation and that she might want the choice and she might not see it the same way you do. So I just think it's very important for people to understand that pro-choice doesn't necessarily mean you're pro-abortion or want abortions to happen everywhere. That's not necessarily the case. I think that abortion is a right in some cases, as I said before. However, as outlined by the Constitution, and as to some degree backed up by the judge's uh, new decision that they have considered, you know, um, producing, um, in the Constitution it says you have rights. You have the right to freedom of speech, you have the right to privacy, etc., as long as it doesn't infringe on the rights of others. In the event of an abortion, it all depends on when you think that fetus um, has become a living thing. If you believe that it is alive when the abortion occurs, then you're infringing on another human's rights, and as such, you forfeit your own. I think that any medical decision that a person decides to have for themselves should be a right, and I think that everybody in this country deserves to have, they have the right to kind of control what happens to their bodies. And if you're pregnant and you do not want that pregnancy and you have no other choice, you have no control in that situation. So I 100% believe that abortion is a right no matter what your circumstance is. So religiously speaking, um, I would say close to um, conception. I wouldn't say immediately at conception, as at that point it's still a single cell, and personally that just does not seem like life to me. However, bringing in the scientific definition of a living thing, um, as soon as the child, or you know, the unborn child in this case, um, responds to a stimulus and satisfies the other six requirements to be a living thing, it would be considered alive, just like everything else that we currently classify as living or dead. As long as it satisfies those six criterion, then it should be considered living, whether it's more convenient for it to be considered living at a later time. I think, well, scientifically, if we're going to talk about the six things, one of the points of that is when an individual can maintain homeostasis, and a fetus cannot maintain homeostasis. If you remove a fetus from the womb, it will not survive. It cannot kind of keep its own homeostasis. So I do not believe that a fetus is scientifically living um, because once removed from the womb, it cannot maintain homeostasis. Now there are rare cases with premature babies. I'm saying in general, that's what I believe. And when, and then there's a whole other side of it. Like when do you believe something becomes human? And I honestly believe that that comes from your perspective. So if you're pregnant and you want to have that baby, no matter what, that baby is a human to you and it's a being and it's gonna be your child. But if let's say you don't want that pregnancy, that baby is not a human to you. It is more so just something you wanna get out of yourself. So there's like two sides of it. It's like, is it technically alive or do you consider it a human? And both are kind of mixed up and mushed together and used interchangeably and I think that there's a very big difference between those two. Um, I get what you're saying. Like, I, I fully understand the idea of, you know, an accident occurring or anything like that and being stuck with, at this point, what you're um, attributing to it being a growth almost. It's something, you yeah. know, it's, you don't consider it to be human. It's just a part of you that you don't want there anymore. And if it's forced to be left there, you'll be stuck with a large amount of responsibility, time, etc. spent on this child that will end up being born. And it's not something that you yourself want or consider to be, you know, a living thing. While I do fully understand that, at the same time, um, from just the perspective of, you know, a human who cares about other people and cares about life as, like I said, one of the major, you know, morals or values of the pro-life movement is that 
they value life very highly in this case, it still will become a life at some point. If it's born, it will be a life, and so to stop it from having that life is to infringe on its pursuit of life, whereas to keep it is to infringe on your pursuit of liberty. So in this case, there's no good way to solve the problem at this point, but to remove its life just does not seem like the most just way of doing things. Um, I would just like to ask you, what do you think the most just way to do this is? I don't think at this point in time we have the uh, necessary medical applications or techniques required for what I would propose, which would be some way of artificially, um, you know, extracting and then birthing the child like a test tube baby, but outside of the mother, so that it can still pursue its life, but the woman can still have her liberty and freedom from it. Unfortunately, that's not exactly an option at this point. However, that would be the most just way of handling things. Um, do you think it's just that, let's say, this, what you're calling an unborn child, I would call it fetus, but you know, we have our different views on that. Um, since it does become a life and it's being birthed by a mother, do you think it's just for that child to have to grow up in poverty with, an un with a mother who didn't want it? Do you think that it's fair? Do you think it's just to the mother for forcing her to have this pregnancy and having this responsibility to something for 18 years? So on that note, um, I have two different responses to that. The first one being that although it's currently inadequate and that's the fault of the government, the people, etc., we do have a foster care system specifically in place for moms who don't want their child, but whether that's because they're too poor, they never wanted it to begin with, they should be able to give it to a family that can give it the life it deserves. That system should work. Unfortunately, it doesn't all of the time, and that's simply on the system itself. However, if we were to supplement that or repair it, that should remedy that part of the situation. I personally believe that as I said earlier, privacy is something that I also put value on. And that, well, yes, they should have a right to privacy and should be allowed to have a choice. I'm not saying that there shouldn't be a choice in the matter. I don't think that someone's choice should inhibit the choice of someone else. My choice for my life should not inhibit your choices on your life. So oh, something that I think is like a little funny and ironic in this debate is that you're saying that someone's choice should not inhibit the choice of another's, right? I think that's just kind of ironic because you as a man, right, you do not have a uterus, right? Um, you will not have a pregnancy, so your choice to, let's say, vote or any Supreme Court justice who's a man, their choice to vote and to say, well, we think this is wrong is inhibiting my choice to have an abortion, and that's inhibiting my rights over my own body. So do you really think that that's a fair argument? First would be um, to rephrase what I'm saying uh, to make it a little bit more clear. Your guaranteed choice. So in the Constitution when I refer to choice or rights I'm referring to the explicitly stated rights in the Constitution, freedom of life, liberty, pursuit of happiness, freedom to do, uh, right of due process, etc. These rights. So my right to liberty or my right to pursuit of happiness should not inhibit your rights to do those same things. Additionally, um, as someone doing this interview and speaking for, in this case, the pro-life um, side of this argument, I'm speaking not only out of my own personal opinion, but out of the generalized opinions of other people who believe in the same thing I'm saying. There are women who agree that we should be pro-life as, pro as opposed to pro-choice. In that case, for this situation, regardless of my personal background, my gender, my race, etc., I am speaking on behalf of a group of people that includes women, and as such, the things I'm saying do apply to people who have uteruses as well. So I would say that as I am currently representing them in this scenario, that my vote, my voice does count regardless of my personal background. I think that women who, first of all, let's, most women who have abortions are lower income, right? Um, 
and women in states who do not, let's say abortion becomes illegal in that state, the rich women of that state will be able to travel, they'll be able to fly on a plate, fly on a plane and go somewhere to get an abortion. So this abortion, banning it would truly and mostly harm lower income women. Um, this would mean placing more children into poverty. This would mean placing more children into families and mothers who do not want them and who are not prepared for them. Let's say a 15 year old girl gets pregnant. So someone around my age, I cannot at all handle having a child. I cannot take care of that child. If I get pregnant and abortion is illegal, I will be stuck with this child who will not have the greatest support system because I am young and I cannot handle that. I cannot give that support to that child. Two, the child might grow up by itself. Who knows if my boyfriend or whatever will still be around. They might, because men will have the option to just run away, leave the child, not have anything to do with it. The mothers, the poor mothers will be the ones stuck with these children. And then if these children do get placed into foster care, like you said, our foster care system is so terrible. And so many children in that system get sexually abused. They get abused. A lot of them run away because their situations are so terrible. And these, you're not protecting the, you're protecting unborn lives. You're pro birth, you're pro these children coming out of the womb, but the pro-life movement isn't necessarily helping those children who are already out of the womb. They're not helping support these mothers who are lower income, who have to help, who have to raise these children on their own. They're not supporting the teen mothers who have to struggle through this process. They're not helping the foster care system into making sure it can support these children that were not wanted. The pro-life movement is simply just saying, oh, well, we want this baby to come out. We want this life to live, but we don't want to support it after it comes out. Um, no, it is not. I Killing something is you are going after it with the pure intention of killing it. Letting something die is so different. Like, let's say my grandma was in the hospital, right? And I was there, I'm pretty sure she had like a do not resuscitate thing, right? And so by sitting there and watching her die, I was letting her die, but I wasn't murdering her. I didn't purposefully cause her harm. She just passed away. So the same applies to abortions. If you're taking it out of the womb and it cannot survive outside of the womb, you're not murdering it. You're just evicting it, essentially. And if that fetus dies, then that's what happens. If the fetus cannot sustain homeostasis, then it's not necessarily living. And I just, I don't know. That's kind of, that's a really difficult question because it's like sometimes if you're letting something die, you're complicit in that, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going after it with the intention to murder it and end its life. So it's all behind your intent, I guess. I completely get what you're saying, and I agree that it is a huge injustice that men have the opportunity, uh, we as men, have the opportunity to get out of this, leave, etc., um, a woman with all of the inconvenience and struggle of having a child. Uh, from the perspective of the pro-life, you know, opinion, as awful as this injustice is, and I fully agree with you that it, it is terrible. I place the life of one person above the happiness of another. That's just the way my values align, is that the life of the unborn child in this case ranks slightly higher on the list of values than the happiness of the mother during that pregnancy and afterwards. I get that it's not ideal at all the way that this works, However, based on that belief of putting life first before happiness or anything along those lines, that's just the, the value that drives the opinion of people who are for life, is we just simply believe that the most important thing in this situation is life. And so with how much division there is normally between the two sides, this has been a very 
civil talk between the two of us. However, in a lot of cases, there's a lot of division and people really hate each other across the opposite sides. What it really boils down to is that the pro-choice movement, as she's just said, is faced with the terrible injustice of being stuck with all of the problems of birth, of carrying that child, etc. And it really is truly bad. I hope that everybody who is pro-life can understand this. And I hope that the people on pro-choice can understand that I'm not trying to rob you of your privacy. We're not trying to rob you of your ability to have an abortion. We simply believe that a human's life is too important for our happiness or our ease of life to take precedent over it. It's very interesting hearing what other people have to say about it. Um, yeah, I think honestly everything he said was very interesting. The perspective that it's based on how the mother views it, um, whether it's actually a human or not, was interesting. I haven't heard that one before. Um, I would agree to some degree with that, that it can dehumanize or, I guess, rehumanize uh, a fetus or unborn child simply based on how the mother feels about it. That's an, another interesting perspective to think about on the topic.